I was very unsure about the interview and I was thinking this is gonna be terrible. You know, when I first put a request in for you, I went back and looked at my email last night. When? Uh, 2015. I first put in the request to his agent and then his publicist, and that got nowhere. And a DM when I was in Davos for World Economic Forum, and he happened to be there, led to him taking a lunch with me in New York. And what I thought after the first meeting would be a reasonably quick booking ended up still taking years and years and years. We got Tom Hanks to tape a message for David. Hey, come on, man. Come on, give Graham that time. Date and time, man. And of course, I'm thinking like, no brainer now. We're gonna immediately get him and did not work. Honestly, what ended up getting David to agree to the booking was he was putting all these conditions on it. And I just said to him, I'm like, you know, it's, let's just bag it. And then he ended up agreeing to everything. At first, when I heard our shoot was David Blaine, I was like, magic, that's lame. And then um, everything changed once I got to his uh, place in Tribeca. From the second we got there, until we were done tearing out. He was just like hanging out with the crew doing magic. It was like a free private VIP show from David Blaine. Take a bill out of your biggest bill is. And wait, always keep it face down. I don't understand it. The f***ing thing with the dollar bill number, I lost sleep over that. So every bill has a unique serial number, but you see this begins with a zero, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is like a zero. What's the next number? Seven. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Nine. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Six. Eight. Oh my God! And there's an eight. Yeah. He is very like understated and low key, and then he does this amazing thing, and everybody else, the audience, all of us were just like screaming or like, oh my gosh! He always picked me to help out with the tricks, so every time he picked me, I'm just like, yes. Say the card out loud. Number and suit. The, the one I saw. Yeah, the one that you thought of from inside. Um, the three of diamonds. That's it. Queen of Spades. No, yeah. the queen is holding the three of diamonds. Look in her hand. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I'm convinced he's not human. I, I feel like he's like this really like supernatural being that, that's like living among us. We all left kind of saying, wow, what is the experience of a lifetime? He taught me a trick. And like I did it in the episode, you see me doing it, I'm like, and it works out. How the f does that work? And then I get home and I'm like, to my girlfriend, I'm like, hey, check out this trick I learned. I was like very arrogant about it. Like, I'm a magician now, and then it didn't work out. What? <laughs> does that work with any deck cards? Yeah. <laughs> and you guys all have the secret now. The card trick is cool, but the stunt stuff is just him being a lunatic. 63 hours in a block of ice. What's going through your mind? I was having nightmares and dreams while my eyes were open. But if there was one I would never redo, it's the ice. There are so many different stunts he's done that have had such negative consequences on his body. Can we get that sword? Is it somebody, it's right there on that. It's right below. Thanks. I was not expecting him to pull this giant sword and shove it down his throat and it is like visibly choking on this thing and like convulsing. And yeah, it made you kind of sick to your stomach. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How are you feeling right now just after having done that? Like yeah, what? fine. Really? Yeah. I grew up watching his specials on ABC. And I think it's rare that you're able to profile somebody who's just so distinctly original. I think when David Blaine started to talk about his mother and he had all these beautiful photos of her and talked about his memories and that was really moving. My mother had a very difficult life. She grew up from a very wealthy, 
Jewish mafia family. And I think that, that kind of corrupt money, I think set her on a mission of her own that she didn't want to be a part of that. And I think she left her family, left everything. She was, went from New York City to moving into Brooklyn after a suicide attempt when she was 18. We didn't know going into the interview that his mom had attempted suicide until David offered that up. And I think David's biggest hesitation with doing this taping was the fact that we like to kind of dig deep and not cover surface level type stuff. He does a lot of media, not though a lot of media where he really gets into you know, his, his life. And so I, I was really surprised that he went there. I think one of the other things that stood out most to me from the experience with David was how involved he wanted to be in the post-production process. We don't give creative control, but he wanted to kind of make sure the magic was presented in the correct way. And then he ends up on the phone repeatedly or on FaceTime repeatedly with our editor and producer. It started out like very heady, very exciting. And he would call and say, Cara, it's David. And I'd be like, oh, hi, David. And at first I was nervous, the first five or six phone calls. And the next five or six phone calls, it was like, oh, hi, David. And then the next like 10 phone calls, it was, hi, David. Everything you guys did is amazing. Just minor notes. So on one hand, it made their lives miserable. On the other hand, I think it was a treat for everybody having the opportunity to work with somebody of that skill set, attentiveness to detail, and desire for perfection. So David and Cara, friends for life? Besties. <laughs> All right, David? <laughs> One of the nicest things anybody has ever posted on social media was the video that David posted as part of the release of that content. I was very unsure about the interview and I was thinking this is going to be terrible, but it turns out even though it's uncomfortable going in depth, which is the name of his show, which is why I didn't want to do the Graham Bensinger show, he got into subjects that actually made me reflect on things that I hadn't thought about and it was actually very moving for me. So it was a really incredible experience and I spoke about things that I would never ever tell anybody nor have. People close to me were like, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> so it was fun.